What's up guys, Kudokun here. I know we kind of waited until the end of the month to get back on track with this, but uh, we're getting back on track with this. Better late than never, as the old Kudokun idiom, although I suppose never never is also something that happens sometimes, but this is a late and not a never. I don't really know what I'm talking about anymore. Today we're going to look at the Gurren Lagan trial deck. Now, a trial deck is pretty classic for me. It's something I used to cover a lot, and I sort of stopped for a while, but today we're going to be looking at one, and I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised. So that, uh, that idiom thing took a lot of time. Let's just get the deck list up there. As always, if you're just here to net deck the deck list, then here it is. Please enjoy. All I ask is that you leave me a like on your way out. For the rest of us, you'll notice that the numbers are shockingly good. Aside from being a bit too heavy on the level 1s and the events being a little awkward and out of place, this is actually one of the best balanced trial decks that we've ever looked at. But do the cards actually hold up? Now that's our million dollar question. 16 level zeros, and they're not pushovers. Honestly, the level 0 lineup is pretty stacked. As with tradition, though, let's get the level 0 vanillas out of the way. There are no level 0 vanillas! So instead, we're gonna fill this time with an anime dance party. Wasn't that fun, everyone? Can't wait for the copyright strikes to come in. Our first actual card is gonna be Big Bro Kamina, who's a level 3500, which is a pretty big booty for a trial deck card. And... Oh, this card cannot side attack. Oh no, the one thing I didn't want to happen. Realistically, this is a very, very good card. I know there are some cases where you'd like to side attack, but honestly, I feel like knowing those instances is something a little bit too far for a trial deck to have to go. Just give them a 3500. It doesn't rest itself on play if there's some kind of number of climaxes in your discard pile or checking the top card of your deck to see if you even get to keep it in play or any of that weird stuff. Just... 3500, cannot side attack. Our other four of is Shimon digging holes. Yes, by the way, I will be calling him Shimon despite the fact that his name is written Simon in English. In Japanese, his name is written Shimon, and you cannot change the pronunciation. I don't know what to tell you. If you have a Kamina in play, he injects 1000 power at the start of your climax phase into any of your characters. The cool thing about this is it doesn't have to be the Kamina, so if you want to give it to somebody else uh, because your Kamina level 0 is so strong, you totally can. This is also a very important card for our level 1 play, and you'll understand that when we get a chance to look at it. I'd also like to point out that this card has Brainstorm, which is not something you always see in a trial deck, so I really appreciate it here. It's not one of the super good brainstorms, because it's just the draw one card one, but honestly, just any kind of brainstorm is a good idea for trial decks. Get the newbies used to brainstorm early. In addition to that, we have two copies of a more traditional support in Yoko Supporting Role. Very, very aptly named, by the way. It has assist plus 500 to characters in front, and also another effect that gives you plus 1000 power to one of your characters when you play a climax. <laughs> it's funny. This is a very good card to be in a trial deck as far as assist goes, but ironically it ends up being almost dead weight here because there's so many better good cards that go in your back row. So it's a great card, don't get me wrong, but it does get outshadowed by some of the other cards we have. Why, hello Lagan, you're very coincidentally placed. Lagan is a very simple character. You arrest it, something gets plus 1500 for the turn. That is huge. Plus 1500 power to pretty much any character on the field at every single level of the game is always going to be a big deal. Honestly, you could just run two of these in the back row and never have to worry about another back row again, but honestly, your best play is to have a Lagan and one Shimon digging holes, which, like I said before, doesn't leave very much room for Yoko, but it's still a good card. Yoko Woman from the Surface is a runner with no cost, and what is this trial deck? Let's review. A 3500 that doesn't rest or kill itself on play, no level 0 vanillas, three great back row characters, and a runner who can move for free. I told you it was stacked, guys. I warned ya. Now, the cool thing about this card is it combos really well with Lagan. If you can keep this alive during your opponent's turn, then you can boost it to 3500 with Lagan, step over something, and then during your opponent's turn, have it move again. It's very, very good. Take advantage of it. 
Our final level zero is Buddha Small Pig Mole, and uh, it might look like a pretty great card because it gives plus 1,000 to all of your Shimon Youth of Giha Village, and it also bonds with Shimon Youth of Giha Village, and it is good. It is uh, controversially good for reasons we'll be getting into, I suppose, at level one. It is a uh, it is an option for a play style that is viable if it's a style that you want to run. And, uh, yeah, I, uh, ha ha, ha ha, ah, let's, uh, let's just get on to level one. Level one isn't quite as stacked as level zero, but it's still got some really neat stuff in it and a lot of different options we can look at. Let's get the elephant out of the room. There is a 5500 vanilla in Shimon Youth of Giha Village. Oh, the name sounds familiar? I can't even imagine why. Honestly, with the inclusion of Buddha, this is... In, for all intents and purposes, a very good card. It's free, it bonds, it's 6,500 if you have a Buddha in play. Honestly, I have no complaints about it whatsoever, but this is where the deck splits in two. You either play a crazy, wild variant of the deck that uses all of the mechanics that are unique to the deck, or you split off into a consistent, easy-to-play version of the deck that doesn't cost very much stock and is a lot easier to learn. I've got a lot more to say on this, but I think we should move it along and I'll talk about it a bit more when we get to the end. Running straight down the list of impressive concepts that the deck throws at you is this little guy right here, Lagan, Drill That Pierces the Heavens, which introduces Climax Combos. If you have two or more Dai Gurren characters in play, this is a 5500. And if you have its Climax in play when you reverse a character, you can take one character from your discard pile and put it back in your hands. Man, what can I even say about this at this point? It's good. It's a very, very solid pick. Not only is it a Climax combo, but it's a very easy Climax combo to use. It's got a pretty nice little payoff, and it doesn't cost any stock or anything. Continuing our level 1 beaters, we've got Gurren is the name, which, might I add, is another free level 1. When it's put in play, you can take a Big Bro Kamina or Kamina Leader of the Gurren Brigade from your discard pile and put it face up under this as a marker, and if you don't have a marker, this is a 2500. I really like the synergy here. If you don't have a marker under this, it's not necessarily the end of the world. It's not like you can't play this if it doesn't have a marker or something, so if you're level 3 and you just want to attack with it, it doesn't even matter if you give it a marker, but if it is level 1 and you do need it to have that marker, there's plenty of cards to give that marker. So finally we hit a level 1 that costs a little bit of stock, but for good reason. This is Kamina Unwavering Oni Leader. If you have Shimon Digging Holes in play, then this is a whopping 7500, and even if you don't, this is still a card with Encore. It's the Kill Yourself Encore, where you put a top card from your deck into the clock, but it's still good. I also want you to think back to what Shimon Digging Holes actually does. During your climax phase, you can give a character plus 1000, so this could be an 8500 if you want it to be, or the 1000 could go to somebody else. Even with the one-stock requirement, I find this to be a much more attractive option than the Shimon Legacy of Yada Yada Village. If you're worried about which one is technically better, I recommend you go check out my Advanced Tips and Tricks Episode 3 about deck consistency. I think there's something in it you'll like. Man, it just never ends with this deck! We also have a free 1500 backup in the form of Yoko Giant Rifle. Brainstorm, backups, bonds, climax combos. This is just like a petri dish of all of the things that a newbie should be learning about Weiss Swartz. Level 2 is when the deck cools down a lot. It's not as explosive as level 0 and 1, but it's a pretty nice little consistent level, and uh, <laughs> you guys haven't seen anything yet. If you guys think the deck is going to just lose steam here on level 2, it's because you guys haven't seen the level 3 yet. Uh, I don't want to spoil it, but let's just say that this is a pretty nice place to take a deep breath and then just let it all out at level 3. We're going to start with Yoko on the Cruel Surface, which is an amazing level 2 assist card, which, can you really be shocked about this anymore? I really feel like I can't even be shocked about this anymore. 1k to essentially all of your characters, and when this is put in play, you can discard a card from your hand to choose one of your opponent's cost 0 or lower characters in the back row and put it in stock. So not only is it a permanent 1k to all of your characters, but it also snipes one of your opponent's back rows if it has zero cost or less. Uh-huh. Good. 
Realistically, what else do you even want me to say here? Shimon rescuing Big Bro is our main beater. Uh, up to twice per turn. Keep that number in mind. Twice per turn is important here. When you play a Die Gurren Brigade character, you can discard the top card of your deck, and if that card is also a Die Gurren Brigade character, this gets plus 3,000 for the turn. Plus 3,000 for the turn, up to twice per turn, means this is a level 2 that can get up to 13,500 on attack, on top of all of the great back row we have. With one Lagan in the back row that you can rest to give this power, this is a 15,000 attacker in a trial deck on level 2 that costs one stock. And it, it doesn't even cost any stock to give it the power boosts. Granted, this is more balanced than I'm making it sound because it will die during your opponent's turn since it is only a 7,500, but... Still, <laughs> the ability to attack with 13,500 base is just insane at level 2. This is going to kill something. Okay, it is an assassin. It is going to kill something. Finally, we're going to take a look at Gurin. And, uh, well, there is really only one final mechanic that they could introduce to the deck. And they essentially introduce it here, although a little bit different. That concept is, of course change. When Gurin comes into play, you can take up to two Gurin Lagan merges from your waiting room and put them back on the bottom of your deck. I'll be honest here, this is a bit of a noob trap. There's really no reason why you would ever want to put two Gurin Lagan merges on the bottom of your deck. Even if you're pulling off two of these, each one of them will let you do this effect, so you could honestly just use one from each effect instead of putting the two back from this one card, but I digress. Uh, just keep in mind if you're new to the game or something, you always want to just put one back. I really don't know why you would ever choose to put two. You're essentially just adding a free damage to your deck that you're not going to get to interact with, so bad idea, just add one. So then its other effect hits, merge, and I'll explain how merge works for those of you that don't know. Essentially, you attack... And then after the attack, you can pay whatever its merge cost is and then change in the middle of a battle and have all of the cards currently in the stack go underneath the card you're changing into to become a new stack of cards. So in this case, you attack, and if you have a Lagan in play, which you should, then you put it underneath this card, then you search your deck for the level 3 and you put it on top of both this and the Lagan. So essentially, it's... One level 3 with Gurin and Lagon in its markers. It might sound a little complicated right now, but trust me, it is nothing compared to the merges you'll see in the actual set. Just think of this as change into level 3, and you only have to have two cards in play to do it. It's pretty good. Keep in mind that the new card that you merge into can also attack. So you attack with Gurin, you merge into Gurin Lagon merged and then you attack with that card as well it's good just trust me now we're getting on to level three and let me just say if you like epic montage worthy amv making finishers i think you're gonna like the way this deck ends we'll take a look at kamina leader of the gurren brigade first funnily enough this is the only way to get a level three kamina if you want to build a kamina waifu deck or something so just something to keep in mind it gets plus 500 for each of your other Die Gurren Brigade characters during your turn, so it can be up to a 12,000, and you also heal one card from your clock when it's put in play. Kind of a boring character, but there's nothing wrong with it. It's very solid. It heals on play. It's a 12,000. With the great back row you're getting, this is going to attack for very big numbers. Overall, a very solid choice. Now we're getting on to the true boss, the big daddy, Gurren Lagan Merge. When it's put in play through merge or just hard casting, you can draw two and discard a card from your hand. And when this card's battle opponent becomes reversed, you can pay one and discard a card from your hand to deal one damage to your opponent. This might not sound like a lot if you are newer to the game, but let me assure you that this card is pure, unadulterated bullcrap. This effect is not on attack. It is whenever this card reverses another character. So if it's your opponent's turn, and they have the goal to attack into this with like a level 0 or level 1, or just something for some soul damage, then your opponent's going to take 1 damage. And honestly, paying 1 and discarding a card from your hand is nothing 
it's a nothing cost for dealing one damage to your opponent. And at level 3, this is going to get really, really insanely good wins. I also want you to keep in mind that the merge effect happens on level 2. So from level 2 onward, this deals one damage to your opponent during your turn, and also your opponent's turn, meaning that on top of its normal attack, it's dealing two extra damage every single turn that it stays in play. And yeah, its cost might be a little bit too hefty to keep up every single turn, but you guys don't even know. You guys don't even know. You guys haven't even seen what I'm about to show you yet, so you couldn't possibly know just how awful and ludicrous this is gonna get. Howdy boy howdy guys, this deck comes with its own event. I wonder what kind of event it is. Maybe it'll let us search our deck for more cards. Maybe it'll salvage cards from the discard pile. Those are things that are pretty consistent with trial decks. It's called cross counter, maybe it's a backup that gives us a little bit of extra power. That would be kind of cool. I want you to think back for a second to the deck you've been presented. Do you really think that a deck like this would feature something as balanced and easy as just getting a card from your discard pile back or searching your deck for a character and putting it in your hand or giving you a little bit of power. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. Let's take a look. Cross counter. Counter. Choose one of your Gurren Lagan merged in battle and that character gains plus 3,000 power and the following ability during the turn. Oh, plus 3,000 power, that's that's good. That's gonna step over some things. Okay, awesome, so what ability do I get? When the battle opponent of this becomes reversed, you may deal four damage to your opponent. No, oh, good, this, this is fine, it's totally balanced. All right, how much does this card cost again? Five stock? Four? Three? No, 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 two stock. It's two stock to deal four damage to your opponent and get plus 3,000 power. Holy crap, what were they thinking? So let me set up the situation for you. Your opponent plays a 12,000 and attacks into your big beefy 10,000 duder. You play cross counter. Not only is this character now reversed because you're up to 13,000, but your opponent will take four damage on top of it. And also, your opponent is going to take another one damage if you choose to pay one more stock and discard a card from your hand, so they're going to take a total of five damage. Now this already sounds kind of bad, I totally understand that. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and take that to the next level. Let's say your opponent plays a level zero and attacks into your Gurren Lagan merge. Now, normally, you, do, you just do this to deal some extra soul damage, and there's not really that much of a repercussion if you get reversed, but in this case, your opponent is now attacking with a 3,000. You play this plus 3,000, which not only overkills the crap out of their level 0 or level 1 or whatever they decided to attack with, but on their turn, they're now going to take the 4 damage and the 1 damage on top for Gurren's effect. So your opponent could very well end up losing the game on their own turn just through Gurren Lagan Merge's effects. And if your opponent doesn't lose, if they happen to cancel the 4 damage and then cancel the 1 damage from Gurren Lagan Merge's effect, then on your turn, your opponent is down 2 climaxes and you're going to have just... A big ol' hey old time getting rid of the rest of their clock. It is some messed up stuff. It's just a game winning card, no matter how you look at it, and two is an absurd cost for something like this. The one thing that balances it out is you can't use it at level two, but you can play the character it's associated with at level two and then use it as soon as you hit level three, so I don't even see where there's a problem. And in the event that your opponent doesn't die from it, during your turn, they have a guaranteed open spot for you to attack into, and it's just... It's too much, man. It is quite the explosive finisher. These are the climaxes here. Honestly, nothing that special. It does have bounce triggers with who the hell do you think I am, but it doesn't have any salvage triggers, which thank god it doesn't. You should have to work a little bit to make a competitive deck, okay? You should have to go out and get your own salvage triggers, okay? I think that's fair. So that's it for the deck, and what do I think? Well, I really don't know what to say after that. This trial deck is insane. I would almost argue that this trial deck is better than the regular set. 
I don't want to go crazy here giving this deck too much praise, but I will say that as far as trial decks go, it might possibly be my favorite trial deck. If it's not, it's probably in the top five somewhere. It's just so good. It's got a mix of everything that a newer player needs to learn, and it's got so many different options that really the only problem with the deck is if you have only one trial deck, it's gonna feel really messy because you've got so many different paths you can go down, and it all feels a little bit too watered down. If you can get your hands on two of them though, and decide what kind of deck you want to build, I think you've got something really special on your hands here. Honestly, I'm speechless. I don't even know what else I could possibly say about the deck to big it up. If you're interested in getting into Gurren Lagan competitively, or if you're just looking for a new trial deck to pick up, I give my highest recommendations to the Gurren Lagan trial deck. Now this is the part where I go back through the deck and I tell you how to build a more competitive version of the deck if you have two copies, and you might be a little bit disappointed here because there are so many different variations I see for this deck that I'm only really going to be able to tell you one and that one might not fit your playstyle very well. I cannot stress this enough, if you want to find a good way to play the Gurren Lagan trial deck, you need to experiment. It's just going to be all about player preference and your preferences are going to be a bit different than mine. The way I see it, there are probably going to be two main routes you go. You either go a very classic traditional Weiss Swartz deck build, which is very consistent, it's very good, and it just wins consistently, or you're going to go for a very meme-heavy version of the deck where you really take advantage of all of the craziest mechanics that are in the trial deck to build a trial deck that is either feast or famine. You either go in and you pull off these crazy big combos that win you the game, or you lose the game because your deck just isn't consistent enough to keep up if your stuff doesn't go through very well. And you guys know me, I am all about the more interesting, more unique version of the deck, so that's the version I'm going to teach you how to build. At level 0, start by taking out both Yoko supporting roles and both Buddha small pick mole. We're not going to take advantage of the Shimon Youth of Giha Village combo, and our back row is just too busy for us to use Yoko supporting role. Also take out one Shimon Digging Holes. I feel like we're fine at 15 level zeros. I think 16 is a bit too much, and we need that extra spot later for one of our other levels. Add two more Lagan, because Lagan is just a broken card you're going to want in your back row all the time. And add two more Yoko Woman from the Surface, because she is a runner for free. That is something we need to take ample advantage of. At level 1, take out all four Shimon Youth of Giha Village. Yes, it can work here, but if we're taking out Buddha, there's no reason to use Shimon Youth of Giha Village. Also take out two of the Lagan Drill that pierces the heavens. You can keep this at four if you really, really want to, but we need the space for other cards. In my opinion, put in two more of the Kamina Unwavering Oni Leader because it's just such a powerful card. I don't see why you wouldn't want to run four. Like, yeah, it does cost you one stock, but there are already so many free cards you can be playing. I don't see that as a big deal. If the one stock really does bother you, then put in Gurren as the name instead, or just keep Lagan Drill that pierces the heavens at four copies. At level two, put in two more Gurren, because we're going to be focusing on that merge, so you absolutely want four copies to make sure it happens. And put in one more Yoko on the Cruel Surface, because it's a decent level two assist, and that's awesome. I'm doing this for consistency's sake. If you're really not that worried about getting Yoko on the Cruel Surface in play, then you could put that one more towards another Yoko Giant Rifle. Both are very valid options. At level 3, put in one more Gurren Lagan Merge. I know it's weird that we're going to be focusing on this card, but we're only going to run it at 3 copies. That's because Gurren immediately puts one back into our deck, and because of that, we just don't need to run 4 copies. You're almost always going to have one in your discard pile, and if you don't, that's even better, because it means you don't have to add any to your deck, and you can just search your deck for one card, and that's one less damage your opponent can deal to you. We're going to keep the two Kamina leader of the Gurren Brigade. Not only does it work with Gurren as the name, but it's also just a really nice consistent healer, and there's no reason to take him out. He's fine where he is. At this point, you've got one card floating, and it's the one card that we took out of our level 0 to make room for, and you're going to put in one more cross-counter event. That card is 
bananas. It is going to win you a lot of games. Definitely, definitely run it at no less than three. And that should be it. This was a lot of fun. I loved going back and looking at a trial deck just like the old days of Kudo-kun like five years ago. And this was just a, such a fun trial deck to look at. Thank you all so much for stopping by. I hope you're looking forward to the other two Gurren Lagan videos we have planned this weekend, and I'll see you guys next time. Hey you, thank you so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, I'd really appreciate it if you left me a like. They help the channel grow and let me know that you want more of this kind of content in the future. The channel is currently being supported by these lovely folks on Patreon. You guys rock! If you have any thoughts on the video, of course leave them in the comment section below along with suggestions on what I should do next, but also answer this question to prove that you made it to the end of the video, if you feel like it. And finally, if you found this video by accident, then subscribe to stay up to date on the latest Kudo news. You can also hit the notification bell. Ringing the little bell will let you know when I upload a new video. See you next time!